let's take a look at what comes in your kit. You have the resin and hardener, mark number one and number two. You also have two cups that have measuring uh, points on them, a number one and a number two. You have a pair of gloves, a small sponge, paintbrush, a large mixing cup. I'm gonna put everything out here. You have a larger container of white paint. We'll be using that first. You have teal, blue, uh, medium blue, and gold. You also have a large cup that each of those will go in later. These are marked four ounce. So I'll just put these in here and to the side. These are for later. You also have a small stirring stick for each of those when we do mix the paint. You have larger sticks for mixing. This smaller number two cup is for white, the small white. Okay. All right, so we're going to get started. Our first step is painting the tray. So for painting the tray, you'll need the large container of paint, your brush, and the small sponge. So I'm just gonna start with long strokes. I'm gonna cover the whole bottom. We're doing the bottom so that the epoxy will have a white background and that'll actually make the epoxy look brighter because it is on a white background. So while I'm painting this, I'm taking large amounts and kind of squishing it into the corner because you'll see there are small gaps in some areas. So I'm filling those gaps with the paint kind of like a putty. I just want to have those areas stopped up so I don't lose any of my epoxy. So I'm using those. You'll see that the paint goes in there and it just builds up the areas. So I'll continue to paint the rest of the tray. You only need one coat on the bottom of this and just make sure just make sure you've gotten into the cracks in the corners and they will dry up okay. now that I've finished with the paintbrush I'm going to use the sponge with the white paint I'm going to rub this in to the sides really well because it's more like a stained look. We want to keep the beauty of the wood. So I'm scrubbing it in. You can use it on the top as well. And it'll give you a nice stained effect that doesn't look painted. You won't have the brush marks use a sponge and you'll see that the beauty of the wood remains because you're scrubbing it in but you don't want to cover you don't want to cover the the wood grain you want to be able to see that still we're not worried about brush marks in the bottom because they will just be gone once the epoxy flows over them Okay, so I have poured the resin and the hardener into the cups marked one and two from the bottles that they were packaged in. And now I'm going to dump the cups into the mixing cup. 
I'm gonna let everything drip out. Now I'm gonna use this stick to scrape the sides and bring it down to the middle of the cup there so that I can get the rest of what's in here. So again, I'm scraping the sides and pulling it out. After you've done that, you can also pull it out with the stick. Just give it a good turnaround and you should have everything out. Now I'm gonna pour number two in. Number two is the hardener. And I am, same thing, make sure I get all of it out of the cup. I'm scraping the sides with the length of this stick. Okay. And now I'm gonna run the whole thing around the cup and put the rest in there. So you'll see that it now looks a little silvery. And when I start to mix it, it gets cloudy. And you do also see almost a greasy look or a st stringy look. So this has to be mixed for about three and a half minutes. Uh, before you start, you should set your timer. If it's not completely clear in three and a half minutes, then you'll just continue stirring. You may need another 30 seconds to a minute. So I'm gonna stir this until it's clear. I'm scraping the sides of the cup and I'm pulling up from the bottom to make sure that I get everything. You just wanna make sure this is mixed completely. You don't wanna leave little pockets of epoxy in the corners because we need to have it all mixed together. That way it will harden correctly, it will cure correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with this until it's all clear and then we'll move on to the next step. So once we have it mixed, I'm gonna dump these paint colors into my cups. You have four four ounce size cups and one two ounce. The one two ounce is for your white paint. Okay. So you have the medium blue, the teal. Let me get it all out of there. So you should have a stick for each one. I'll do the blue. There's a little more paint in these uh, than you need to account for what sticks to the sides. So this is enough paint to color your resin. The last one in the big cups will be the gold. I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. And I'm gonna get the gold into this cup. The gold is for the beach. Okay. So I think I have all of that. Now, my epoxy is all mixed and I'm going to pour it into the cups and mix up. I for, let me get the white as well. The white, we really don't need much of. So you're going, that's why we use the smaller cup. Make sure I have enough paint in here. Okay, so I will start with that little cup. I'm gonna fill this about halfway and then these same thing a little more than halfway one two three and four okay so I have my four colors and the white. I'm gonna mix up my white first because it's been sitting there. 
So really on this, you only need about half a cup for the white. It mixes very nicely. And then I'll mix the others. You see how it looks a little stringy. You want to make sure that you really mix these well. Because when we start to pour them, you want you don't want to have any stringy looking or streaky looking colors. They will blend very nicely. The blue and blue looks very nice. Nice and mixed. You want to mix all of these before you start. This is the teal. So I'm going to have all of these colors mixed before I bring back the tray. But if you do have a stubborn bubble, you'll want to have a lighter, like a butane lighter kind that you use for the grill or the kind that you used to, people used to use the smokes or the kind that the small kind that you light birthday candles with. So we've brought our tray back and I'm giving my colors another stir make sure that they're all blended and I'm going to start with my beach you don't have to make it the beach the same size as mine you can make it smaller if you want but I'm gonna pour as I'm pouring as close to the edge as I can but I don't want to get too close to the edge because then I risk getting it up the sides of the of the tray. So I've got the beach in. I'm going to start with my colors from the other side. We'll be starting the blue next, but you should have this little tool here and with it I'm carefully bringing the epoxy close to the edge. It does move on its own, but this will help it to definitely get into the corners. The edges, it's self-leveling. So you don't have to worry about it keeping these little lines in it as I'm working. But I really want to make sure it gets in these corners so that it looks nice and finished. Pushing it in. And just be careful that it doesn't run up the sides. Okay. So I'm going to let it be little curvy here on the edge. So this is a little less than a quarter of the, this is a little less than a quarter of the size of the tray, the length. You should make sure you have some paper towels on hand. Get them into the edges here. This is like a, a syrupy, has a syrupy feel to it. So I'm going to use the final direction, the way that the beach actually runs. So I don't have lines going this way. I'm gonna let my tool help me to give it some flow here. And it will continue to move, you'll see. And 
and smoothing it. So you want to be real careful you don't get it up on your edges. I'm going to just clean that off with the paper towel so it's ready for my next color. I'm going to let that sit there because it will kind of move. I'm going to go to my blue. Again, I'm pouring close to the edge, but not too close. I want to make sure I do not get this on the sides. get the last bit out of there. Grab all my blue. Back again to my tool and like carefully bringing it to the edge. Very slowly. You should just take your time with this. So if you kind of pull it close to the edge, just swipe this across. It'll help get into those edges. This does not have to be a perfect line here. So this will be about a quarter of the way in. I'm being very careful on my edges. You'll be able to tell when you're sliding the scraper across how thick it is and you'll be able to tell it's like icing a cake. So you're bringing it down, bringing a little more. There's a lot that's traveled over this way. So I'm going to bring that towards this way, getting my corner in there carefully. I'm going to use a little more icing here. Now, if you had bubbles in your cup when you poured it in, they're going to dissipate. Okay. I'm in all my edges and my corner. I'm pulling out any extra thick areas. Pull it out over here. And this will self-level, come about here, if it is real thick in an area, just pull it out towards the edge here, okay, Beautiful, my edges look good. These are just the worst to do. The side here and that side there. Just have to be careful. I don't want to take too much time up. You don't want 
want it to start to thicken. So my next color will be the my next color will be the light blue. I'm gonna let it start close to the blue. And I'm gonna get the rest of that out. Just wanna get all your epoxy out of the cups. You can even use the popsicle sticks to move this around. That's fine, I just saved that other tool for when the, uh, for when I get really close to the edges. Using my popsicle stick as like a little smoother and get it close a little closer up here okay it's very uh very sticky kind of like kind of like honey so i'm gonna kind of let this mix a little bit here Going back to my tool, getting in my corners. This is nice and thin, so it helps you get in there. I'm not really pushing a lot when I do this because it's going to flow the rest of the way. So you notice I'm, I'm coming here and I'm just pushing it until the epoxy gets into that corner. Okay. So, corner, I'm going to let this kind of blend a little bit here. I have some bubbles there. And be careful you don't splash, because that will go up on the sides too. Okay, so I'm going to wash this off and get into my next color. Uh, the final color is the teal. Now for this, because I'm close to my beach here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour close to that beach, but I'm going to let the let it flow the rest of the way. Close to the edge. Try to control your pour so you don't get it on your edges. The rest down the middle. Okay, I'm gonna get the rest out. Okay, beautiful. Now I'm gonna let this use the stick again as the scraper. Don't worry too much about these, like I said, these little lines here. They're, they'll disappear as soon as it all flows around. It's self-leveling, so I want to get closer to my blue here. So I don't really want to let this mix together the teal and the beach. I always want to make sure I'm getting to my edge. Go back to my scraper tool. Just touch it. Good there. Okay. I'm going to give it a little blend here. Do 
find the little the blue in there. Let me do a little blend here. Okay. Okay, so you don't need to rush, but you don't want to move too slow because we want this to flow when we do our waves. So I'm just letting it mix a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my white, I'm gonna carefully drizzle, woo, that's a lot, along my beach line there. Then we'll do the same thing, very, very thin lines. I don't want a lot out here. Pull some, pull some over. Okay, so now we're going to work with the blow dryer. You need to be really careful when you're working with the blow dryer that you don't get your wire into your work. So I'm going to make sure my wire is in my hand. First, I'm going to warm it up. Um, I'm going to warm it up with the low level. This will also get rid of some bubbles. You'll notice how I'm holding on to the wire with my other hand. Once you've warmed it up a little, you're going to go on high and start creating the waves. So I'm on high, holding my, my wire. You'll notice I went in both directions when I was working with this and it get I don't want it to get too mixed up I want it to stay I want it to stay with the wavy look I don't want it to blend I'm gonna do the last one So here's a close-up of the finished product. I'll get down close so you can see the waves and the effect that we created. Okay, very beautiful. And if you want to take a close-up into the corners, you can see how I pushed it up there and how nice and clean that looks using the scraper tool. Okay, so again, here is our finished product. Beautiful.